took a lot of hard work to get tennis from the days where it was a gentleman's sport, played mostly in high-end fancy clubs with wooden rackets and little to no running, to the tennis of today, which features some of the world's best athletes, female and male. While tennis associations argued and fought over issues such as playtime, permission of racket evolution, and many more issues, women's tennis especially overcame many more difficulties than men's tennis to get to where it is today. Women had to worry about their clothes much more than their counterparts did. They had to worry about making ends meet as the pay for men's tennis was significantly higher, and they were most concerned about how women's tennis was viewed by the world, as a warm-up show for men's tennis. As with anything perceived as a problem by anyone willing to do something about it, women's tennis was about to undergo a metamorphosis of colossal proportions with the entrance of Margaret Court Smith, Billie Jean King, and surprisingly enough, misogynist Bobby Riggs. I think Billie Jean King, uh, her influence on women's tennis was more of a societal impact on women's tennis in which the game began to be viewed on a much more level uh, playing field as the men's game, uh, especially when you know, we look back at the 1973 match between her and Bobby Riggs and the battle of the sexes. It was a significant event. It showed that an elite woman athlete could compete and defeat an uh, average male athlete, and it really demonstrated that the women's game was an important and impactful uh, part of tennis. As one who uh, began learning tennis in the 70s, Billie Jean King was a huge factor, a huge influence in, in um, the shape of the women's professional game. Um, I started my first clinic was with Althea Gibson, a very historical figure who happened to be a resident pro at the Glastonbury Racquet Club. She was the first African-American female to break into the U.S. Open. Um, and although we read an awful lot about Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs and the Battle of the Sexes, and uh, I certainly watched on television, I think most of her advocacy was behind the scenes in terms of organizing women, beginning an association, fighting for equal prize money, um, and bringing the women's game up to in, in what it is today in terms of it being every much the equal, whether we're talking about Grand Slam tournaments or we're talking about satellites all over the world. Um, I think most of the women in the Women's uh, Professional Tennis Association owed a great deal of debt to Billie Jean King um, for making all of it happen. It all started on Mother's Day, May 13, 1973. Riggs beat Margaret Court Smith, 6261, further supporting his claim that women's tennis is still inferior to men's tennis, and forcing King to agree to a match to defend the equality in tennis she had worked her whole life for. While the match was full of dramatics, King gave everything she had to win the first set because she knew that if she won that set, that Riggs would fade in the coming ones. In the end, she won resoundingly with a score of 6-4, 6-3, 6-3, and the impact that match had on women's tennis was instantaneous. People would walk up to her in the streets to thank her, not only for what she did for women's tennis, but for men's as well. Without Billie Jean King, women's tennis might still look like this. See if she can do it here. She's got the, the lead, 15-30. Close shot on the baseline. But with the help of Billie Jean King and other players like her, women's tennis has evolved into this. <laughs> 